Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Around the House. Today, we're gonna to be showing you our first time using our new cement mixer, and we're gonna show you how we poured this 10 by 10 slab. So stick around. Step one is making sure that I have a clean workplace. I always want to make sure that I have all the leaves raked up and all the twigs and things out of the way. Step two is construct your mold. We went ahead and raised our mold because we want the slab to be a little bit higher so we don't have a big step down when we come out the back door. Step three is laying down your rock. You really want to make sure that you have a good foundation underneath your cement. I used a rake and a tamper to make sure that I got everything as level as possible and I tamped it down to make sure that nothing was loose underneath our concrete. Step four is mixing the concrete. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Harbor Freight Mixer. I went online and found a couple of people that mentioned that you could put two 80-pound bags of concrete into the mixer. And though I totally agree with this, and we did try it, as you can see here, it didn't work out for us at all. We ended up trying several different variations of one bag or two bag, water first, concrete first, and also whether or not the mixer was moving or not. The sweet spot for us was putting the mixer in notch two, then adding the gallon of water. We would then turn on the mixer and add one bag of 80 pound mix. Let it mix for a minute or two and then use a scraper to pull out about half of the contents of the mixer into a five gallon bucket. Now, I know that a lot of you will probably use a wheelbarrow for this process, but we don't have a wheelbarrow and I didn't know how we could maneuver a wheelbarrow even if we did have one for this project. Step five is pouring the concrete. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments from the experts because this is the first time I have ever poured anything quite this large. Plus I was only able to fill three quarters of a bucket full at a time. With that said, I did learn a lot from this process. One thing that I'm still a little unsure about is rebar. Whether or not I need it for a pour this thin. We were only doing a three and a half inch pour, so I didn't know if I needed that much reinforcement. So what I did was is I found this chicken fence and it had some metal brackets that went along with it. And I think it worked out pretty well. What do you think? I have to admit, this process took a little longer than I expected it to. Putting in the rock and then pouring the concrete took us eight hours. We ended up using 52 bags of 80 pound concrete most of which I would mix one bag at a time. I got about a bucket and a half of wet concrete out of each bag of dry concrete. After I would pour in the wet concrete, I would immediately use the trowel to level and flatten the concrete because I didn't know how fast the concrete was going to dry. And I'm really glad I did this. I didn't run into too many issues of the concrete drying too fast, but I did find that when I would go to one end and then come back to a drier area, it was a little harder to work with. Step six, remove the mold. My goal was to try to smooth the edge of the slab before the concrete dried. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. Half of the slab had already pretty much dried by the time I pulled the mold. So I didn't get to, but it didn't come out too bad. Step seven, add moisture and cover the slab overnight. Be careful when you're adding moisture to the slab that you don't hit any of the spots that are still really wet, unless you're going for a rough look because the aggregate will start to show through. When covering your slab, just grab a clean tarp or some painter's plastic and that'll work just fine. Though it took a lot of hard work, we are really happy with the way our slab turned out and we really enjoyed using our new cement mixer from Harbor Freight. So if you're looking to do small projects like this, we highly recommend grabbing one of these. Um, they're around $250 over at Harbor Freight and uh, it's a pretty good investment. So. 
Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.